what I would want to say is uh, really brief. I'm not going to go on the slides because we're going to waste much time. So I'm just going to put it in point and then we just uh, take it from there. So my name is Yam Mwakwedu. I am from the APAP Ghana Inspection. It's an inspection company in the oil and gas. I've been with them for the past 11 years and it's been hectic. It's not been easy. I need to tell everybody uh, there's nothing like an easy road. So if you're here as a youth and then you're listening, there's nothing like an easy way to, to get money or to ascertain whatever you want. You have to strive for it. So the first one is that um, upon hearing whatever people have been saying since, I think um, I would have to just say that we need the government to help streamline agencies who are like um, uh, recruitment agents trying to take people from Ghana outside uh, uh, Ghana to work or get uh, greener pastures. They need, uh, I think the government or may maybe Ministry of Foreign Affairs needs to get uh, an umbrella where we know that this company is legit and can take people outside to work. With this, when something happens like this as the, the pandemic, we will be able to know that uh, within 2019 to 2020, we took 100 people out in Dubai or in um, anywhere outside Ghana. I don't want to mention names. So then, if there's a problem, then we need to contact them. If they need to come home, we help them to come home. Not for them to stand outside Ghana and then cry for help like they went through somebody else. It was your own means, and when there's a problem, you need to find the same means to come back. I would use this as an example for my company. We had over 36 expatriates here who were working offshore on the, um, uh, the oil and gas. And uh, because they came in legitimately, um, their, their country wrote to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to say that, look, I have 36 uh, Macedonians in your country. And because of the lockdown, they can't come back home and they need to. There and their Ministry of Foreign Affairs gave the approval that, look, although the borders are locked, this is the procedure you need to go through. And then they went out easily. So if we, maybe they came in without any documentation, not in any good means, how would they have gone out? So this is something that I need to touch. And then also I heard the, the, the gentleman say that the embassy should... Uh, help. Um, a lot of people do have good documentations, right reasons they are going out, but the embassies keep bouncing them, I'll use that word, and then it gives them no hope than to use other means. So I would ask, I, I think uh, Kofi and Co, the next time I would wish maybe you bring some um, reps from embassies, from Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and some other governmental institutions to come and listen to us. People go, legit for, for my company, we have locals who are supposed to go out of the country to go and tr be trained and then come back. They go to the embassies and then they are brought back. And this, how will we as Ghanaians go and learn the new technologies that we need to implement in the oil and gas when we are not allowed to go out? Then one of my workers would say, okay, well, if they are not going to allow me to go through the legit way, then I would have to use the other way which we are trying to eradicate. We can't do it like 100%, but I think by this kind of um, seminars and messages, we are trying to get this uh, done, maybe 80%, I hope. And then my last one is um, under um, peer pressure. As uh, my, 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 my other colleague mentioned, it, it to him, and discontent and comparison we need to know that we are all different. If you look at my hands, they are all different. If your friend was able to go by that means to, to, to Europe and the person is well off, it's, it doesn't mean you can do the same. There are lots of opportunities here. I am a female working in the oil and gas, and that is a male-dominated area. But I'm able to sustain because I know what, what I've determined to do. I know my goals. I know what I'm perceiving for. So if we are here today, it is just for us to tell people to look within Ghana and find something to do. And I, I'm not blaming the youth more. I'm blaming sort of the government, the families as well, because if there are jobs, 
I know they are, but if they are more of it, they wouldn't do that. What I have done is that I have an MOU with the Takwadi Polytechnic, now the university, their mechanical engineering department, where I recruit the, the, the guys from, which I'm only looking for more females, but I don't do get it because I want to do a feminist kind of, but uh, I don't really get them. But I'm trying all my best to recruit more of them. As of now, I have over 95 locals and then about 65 expatriates. I'm trying to cut down the expatriate level so I can put in much of the locals. So as um, my friend said, Marion, if you're here and you are in the me mechanical engineering department of uh, Takrade Polytechnic or you know somebody through there, he should go and see the head of uh, the department. He's now Mr. Vroom. You can just go and see him, tell him about whatever you heard here and that you want to be part of it. Put your name on the list and then when he gets there, we will try to get something done for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm Wakwedu. So she's a CEO of Integrity International and APAV Logistics Inspection. So oil and gas sector and she supervises more foreigners and locals as well so the next person to join us the next speaker is the ceo of focus one media the spice fm the beach fm the plus fm and he has orange fm in kumasi as well i think all the regions in ghana and he's going to talk to us about entrepreneurship mr kwami edumante is next <laughs> Youth life matter. Come in, go Thank you very much, and good afternoon. My name is Kwame Dumanti, and I stay in Takradi Apremdo. I think first and foremost, we all have to say a big thank you to Kofi Kenata for putting this thing together. A resounding applause would be. Um, I was raised in Kumasi. I know we have limited time, but we'll try and make it fast. I was raised in Kumasi, and even though I'm now a Takrada person, stayed here over 20 years, there's one thing that is very peculiar in Takrada, that it, you try to help yourself a lot, but unfortunately, most people, the help that comes, they don't pick it. Now, I'm just opposing it to, if this were to be the team move event at jubilee grounds there'll be thousands of people there to have fun but here you are parading gmpc top guys national service mr chum choice mart and choice mart has a unique story but maybe they don't know how they were able to identify that space and build the supermarket in that locality alone it's a story because all the supermarkets we had in town were growing smaller even when they had opportunity to build big, I kept on saying that there's potential. They all did small, squeaky, squeaky shops. Today, somebody comes in, boom, and he's even shut them all down in a way. The person is sitting there. Where are the people here? My sweet lady, I have known her since I came to Takrade. Number one hustler. Today, she's at the top. Girls would like to have a chat with her when we close. Where are the people here? So I think that Takradi people should look at it. Mr. Beth, me and him way back in Kumasi, Media Works, we've hustled a lot. Today, as GMPC and here, you would like to have a conversation with these people. Where are the people here? So that is a very big worry. Because in Kumasi, nobody... Obiang organized a seminar, my own. I was all sorted on. No, no, I was... I mean, organized... For the way. You have to sort yourself. So I think... It's been good, Kofi. I'm impressed. I mean, your music we like, but this is exceptional. And I think when you go back, tell the other people that when these opportunities come, you have to take advantage of it, not only the music. Because the Chinese have something they say, it's best to spend a day with an old man but than to read a thousand books. I am not a scholar. I went to Takrade Poly. I pursued building. That's all I did. But all that I know... I've learned it from people. Most people don't even know that I'm into construction. That's my main work. All you know is radio. I learned it along the line. 
that is just by the way. Thank you. So straight to the point. We're talking about entrepreneurship. When we're in school, they said entrepreneurs were made or born. That argument has still not been settled or won. The first thing I'll ask is who is an entrepreneur. For me, an entrepreneur is somebody who finds solution to a need in society and creatively solves it and the end results become what? Profit. Profit is always what? The end result. But here we are, we think that entrepreneurship is when you go and register a company at um, Registrar General and then the next thing is that they give you the documentation, you open an account and then you come and say that, oh, I want to see somebody. I have guys coming to me, maybe a company and I'm person who advise me. Paper now, I'm you know. <laughs> that is not that is not entrepreneurship please one other thing that i find very fascinating also is the people that i call facebook preneurs he forms a business quickly goes to facebook gets a graphic designer it's a good job for the graphic designers now they are most sought after the, the most profitable business now is graphic designing and digital uh, audio visuals and just to chip it in a cousin of mine is at ust it's called bobby cantona he's in kumasi and he told me, Brah um, I need 6,000 to buy Phantom X. You, it's a drone, right? And I'm like, Phantom X or so it's a drone. I'm like, ah, what are you using a drone for? You are in the investor. So, Brah Kwame, I want to say, you give me the 6,000 in two weeks' time, I'll pay you. And I'm like, are you serious? Bobby said, yes. Okay, I gave it to him, but Phantom X, two weeks' time, he comes back, Brah Kwame, you see? I'm like, how did you go? Oh, maybe we can move. We can wedding be 3,000. If we have drone, Maybe 4,000. So you do two weekends, my money is back. Here we are. Here we are. We want to go through Libya, go through the hustle, and then bustle, and then come in. So Facebook printers, it is also not entrepreneurship. You don't set up Facebook pictures. And then the most annoying part, in quotes, is the ones that do restaurants. The ones that do shoes and rest they're fine but they will put some nice soup and chicken and stuff i say then you order the thing and the thing comes and you're like oh my god that's why i'm saying that that is not entrepreneurship entrepreneurship is not about the profitability but the creative way to solve the problem and its service people should be satisfied it is not the optics it is not instagram and it's an experience people should get. So for me, that is entrepreneurship. And many a time when people are talking, you get the top level, like the GMPC, the Kiyamu Akons, and all the things that come. It looks so big to you. But if you look at the people sitting here, maybe we can do that. So we use our own stories to share. When I came to town, I was at the Polytechnic, and I needed to pursue something, a hand to mouth. But I started selling at the market circle. I was selling anything I could get to, to sell. The advantage I had was because I was not from here, it was a bit easier because main ferry. But that's one thing that affects you guys the most. Oh, ferry. But Jack, it doesn't pay the bills. So there are opportunities in here, but you should know some things. You are in Takradi, we are limited with numbers. So which means that we don't have the volumes. I have a business in Kumasi. I have business in um, Accra. Honestly speaking, hardly do I stay here mostly because the sales that I make from my Medina shop on a daily base sometimes is equivalent to my Takradi shop in a month. So when you look at that, it tells you that but Takradi also has another unique thing that you have. You have cool uh, lifestyle, relaxed stuff. That is also an advantage. And you need to leverage on what you can do. But my challenge with the young guys coming up is, in Takrade, what we should do mostly is collaboration. And it's one thing I don't find here. So if you want to look at the entrepreneurship in here, look at collaboration. Because the moment you do this small, somebody does this small, somebody does this small, when a big player comes in, you are knocked out. But it is very challenging to have that collaboration. And I always talk to most of the guys that if we don't do that, you don't look big. Can you imagine that somebody sells pork and yam and in the night he makes a sale of 2,000 Ghana cities a day. There are four people selling that same pork and yam but with different names. Imagine they all use one name, pork ribs, 
same brand and the same setup, and they are in four different locations. They look what? Big. And they can share resources. They can then buy from same source and then beat what? The price. The volume of stuff goes up. One of the biggest commodities or one of the biggest things happening now is farming. And one thing that Western region has is what? Coconut. During the election coverage, because of media, I was driving all the way to the Mpoho area and stuff. And one coconut is under 50 pesos. And it's about three or 4,000 or more that will get to a truck. That's about 1,500. So if you look at the cost per coconut traveling to Accra, it's just under 20 pesos. Accra, what am I saying? Uh, oh, yeah, lucky now. She had already taken a trip to one city, 50 pesos. We share is Legon Boy number straw shaving a five C D. And depending on where you get it, that is it. But how many of our youth knows this and are willing to go into that? Just even selling the coconut. Forgetting about the things that they can be used for. So, like I'm saying, if you are to spend more time to go into you realize that you are sitting on a gold mine, but yet you don't see it because you but that time, I don't know if you can add a number nine and to come to the No, we are in fear. At the same time, when I was in town running around, nobody was minding me. So that's one of the things. I'll jump on it faster. My other thing I wanted to talk about, entrepreneurship, which helps all of us, is pitfalls in entrepreneurship. I've had my own share of pitfalls. The past two years, I think I've been one person, I've been all the pits in the world. I categorize them into two sections. One is the internal and one is the external. Coming to the internal is basically the things we ourselves cause. And one of the things is passion. And our strength, which becomes passion, also is the same that gives us the weakness. It comes with a Samson uh, theology. Your strength lies, your weakness lies in your strength. The internal one I see is passion, two is literacy. Some people are so passionate about the business they want to do, they, they just don't want to see the numbers involved. So we are not able to scale up. There was one staff of mine that wanted to do Mashki. And when he started Mashki, it was so exciting because he was passionate about it. People liked it. And he packaged it and then he sent his shop, friends will buy, put it on Facebook. You know how he starts Facebook and then the first thing he gets 200, 300 and he's excited. And I drew her attention to something. Are you able to scale up this business? Oh, yeah. Oh, boss. Oh, I'm not I'm not no, that is a passionate, that is an emotional appeal. I'm not the infant cancer. Would you be able to scale up? Because Mashke is good, but you need to look through and scale because the demand was coming. And it's, oh, brother, I mean, let me advertise it and more people will come on board. And you know what? When he advertised it, he killed the business. Do you know why? Because the supplier he was picking the kinky from was a small supplier you're buying for like 100 people now the demand rises to thousand the guy can supply you again and even if he's supplying you at that price you can't meet the demand and you've packaged it so nicely there's a pig milk in it there's granite there's this there's that and the cost of it instead of it's the more it goes up it becomes cheaper it is, was rather becoming expensive because supply chain system was lost he could not source for the products to come lower and he could not build partnership to say you know what Mr. Tuyahin, you give me granite. Mr. Chum, you give me the king. Mr. Okate, you give me the pick. Or I go to Nestle. Nestle, this is my business portfolio. I want the sachets, 1,000 pieces I can sell a day. Partnership with both, they would deliver. Partnership with this. But he wanted to do all. So by the time he realized, he stuck up with it. These are the conversations we need to have. These are the conversations we need to have. So young up-and-coming guys, look into yourself well and then try to see if the business could be scaled up. Some of the businesses, to scale it up is quite difficult. You might need to be in a niche market, which means it becomes premium and your pricing should go up. Growing up in Takrade, there was a restaurant that I always wanted to. I think the first time I went there, I only bought a bottle of Coke and that one was 25 cities. And there was one that I ate there every day. If you can mention the name, I'll give you five cities. It was at the hotel around um, at the Kwame Nkrumah roundabout. There was a small restaurant today. Park Grand roundabout. Oh, okay. It was called Yankina. 
Yankina fast food. I heard the name also, but I really wanted to eat at Captain Hooks. But now I'm cook alone be 25. Yankina Park be 25. Just to see. But that was a niche market. He can't do mass like Yankina would do. So Yankina would do 1,000 packs a day. He would do only 50 packs, but he's more profitable than him. It's like Mercedes Benz and Kia. Mercedes Benz sells tops 10 cars in a month. Kia will sell 100. But who is more profitable? Mercedes Benz. So that settles that bit. So because of time, please prompt me when time is running. Then we come to external factors. External factors, I look at it more like the worst case scenario we have is this pandemic. That is the worst, one in 100 years. But what are some of the things? One, competition. It will always be there. I don't have antidote for competition. At a point, I looked at the market in terms of radio. We were only 12 radio stations. I was very ambitious, and I said that if I could own four of them, that meant I'll control 40% of the listenership, and I'll convert that to 60% of the market share. So whether I buy, I partner, or I lease, I wanted to go for four. It was a brilliant one, but it was a passionate one. It was an emotional appeal. I did. Radio Max, Spice, Beach, I was going on my fourth. By the time I was going on my fourth, guess what happens? The radio stations had increased to 24. Does the numbers hold again? No. So emotional, um, sorry, external factors, competition had what crippled me. One of the other things is the authorities. Authorities. People set up businesses, they don't have lawyer friends. And one of the key things, if you want to be an entrepreneur, I say, and just be his friend. Lawyer, just be his friend. Or pay MP. campaign man on a No, you need it. And that is one of the things we don't start. Because the youth, we are not prepared with those ones. And I'll give you a typical example. The reason why I say you need a lawyer, you can get that. When it comes to scaling up and getting partnerships, and forming networks. Our cultural setup is such that who can't go catch your mom? say, a juma we me ne kwa me kaka ready ya. Hey, one day they are saying we are saying ke ye. We are taught to always behave and believe media one ownership. That is how we are taught. And if we don't have a legal friend to guide us through that conundrum, we get stuck. Two, get an accounting person, a finance person. When you are starting small, an accountant is okay. You get to a certain level, you need a finance person. The difference is the account person will tell you how much you bought it, how much you sell it, what you made. The finance person will let you understand and say, oh, they cut three million krona a asset. Those are two different things. You need that. So you need a legal person, you need an account or finance person, even if you want to sell ice water. Don't think about their cost, because when you grow and get to a certain level, you don't have these guys, the cost, you don't have an idea. That is where the tax people and stuff come because then entrepreneurship, the external factors will start coming in to stifle you. That is where the authorities and stuff come in. So you need that. I'll leave with my few examples of my pitfalls that I fell in to the past two years, which is coming. I've shown you, the, I've told you about the competition one, and I'm telling you about the authorities one. I think. I'm not good at dates. 2013, there about with this ambitious plan of acquiring multiple stations, I had the opportunity to buy Beach FM. And when I was buying Beach FM, the license had expired. But the price was good, about $90,000. You don't buy a radio station like that. It was good, I mean, but the license had expired. An emotional thing. I thought it was an opportunity. Went ahead, bought it, started it up. They didn't really pursue the other side. Then my own people come to power. Bam. They are scrutinizing radio stations. <laughs> my radio station license is what? Revoked. Legally. Because I knew that the license had expired. I bought it. And when you bring it to normal life, it's like, I remember when we were starting Spice or so, there was, you know, Harlem, Harlem restaurant. The woman, the husband had two BMWs. And I bought all for Kwame Boga and somebody else I've forgotten. Feeling that. No, feeling that the one was U84. And the car was parked in the man's house and he had no insurance. And he gave it to us like he just wanted to dispose it, 25,000. 
BMW 3.2 and the, the 3 Series, you get a 50,000. So I bought it. And then we picked the car. And you know, boys, what a car, man. Hoo, 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 hoo. Uh, Vodafone High Road accident. Bam. The car don't get insurance. Matter come. If I fix it ourselves. So it's a similar thing to the Beach FM thing. The price was so good that if the license are expired, I'll buy it, I'll renew it later. But it was quite unfortunate. I couldn't renew it. So I had to go off for almost five months and then come back again. So that comes with entrepreneurship, the authorities and the rules and regulations governing business. The other one is Unique Life Microfinance. The same thing. We bought it. The license procedure had not been completed. The time they were cutting people down, we had not completed the migration from the old owners to ourselves. And what happened again? I got cut again, twice in a row the same year. So the pitfalls of entrepreneurship, some are internal, some are external. The external factors, you need a lot of tact and a lot of predictions and lawyers, insurance and all that to be able to navigate yourself out of it. Taxes and policies is also key. This brings me to the point that if you are young, aspiring person coming up and you want to start up a business, get involved with the local politics of your community. I am not saying be MPP or NDC because the policies they bring affect you. If you get to a certain level and you realize that as it stands right now, any business you do that is service, government takes 26% of it and nobody is shouting about it. Is a problem your small business that you are coming if you are lucky today and any of these firms give you business and a service they will withhold what we call withholding tax 7.5 percent if it is goods it is three percent if it's construction it's five percent now if it's service 7.5 percent will go at the same time 18.125 percent of it is VAT put that two together it's 26 percent of the total amount you are putting out why that is why you need to get involved in local politics and push our members of parliament to change the laws and stop charging them for roads and schools and hospitals. Because if they're able to do that, it will free us up to be able to work and develop ourselves. That is my mind. And it's something we need to look at. Because if they put up these laws and stuff, we, we really don't see it, but it's really affects us. Do you know that if a company is coming into Ghana and it goes through Free Zones Board or it goes through GIPC, um, it's called what? Tax exemption. The company that is able to bring $500,000, that's half a million dollars, into the country, on Wenyan and Hot Chamano, yes, I'm not tax free. Meanwhile, I do any quick or more how I'm best almost start a small business. No, I'm only a register as snit gin also, gin original. So, how do you grow? And instead of we getting to the politicians and letting them know that this is what we want change, you could eat a share to make a crash. Honorable, honorable, we are selling our future. No, those are things we need to start. When you have Facebook, these are things you need to type, these are things you need to write. How come? Because if Kofi is putting up this event and he's renting this hall, it comes with tax. If he set up a small NGO and small business, it comes with tax. So why can't there be a policy whereby that if you are a startup within a certain time frame, your first three years is tax free? Now, can I send them a bit your tax? Do you know lawyers here are referred? Do you know the number of companies that were sent to court by SNET that they've not paid their SNET returns during the pandemic? I'm one. 2013, when we acquired Beach, you take all the liabilities, the lawyers will tell you. They were owing SNET 600 Ghana City or so. So we went there, they said their system was down. When they were doing the OBS, they said, okay, so when it's up, let us know. You know, when the thing came up, they never bothered to tell us. We to continue paying our normal SNET. Last year, there, they came that we owed them how much? 16,000. Guess what? The 600 is there. The 15,000 something is what? Penalties. There's nothing you can say. As I said, we are at the Echo Court. By 21st, if I don't pay, I'll be jailed. It's not that you can't pay, but it's so painful that within this pandemic and all that, 
how do you arrest all these things? The laws. So in as much as you want to be an entrepreneur, we are saying that Ghana day and stuff like that, you know, we are not paying attention to the things we need to do to make it worthwhile for the system to run for us to start up and go. And I remember when I was at the polytechnic building student, I tried going on demonstrations so many times. How do I sit on Takrade Poly campus, read building technology as a course, and then when get fund awards contract for projects to be done on campus, they bring contractors from outside to come and do it, and then we just watch them. One day we were in lecture, and the lecturer was saying that we need to go and do, I think, columns, failing columns, and that we should get down and see underpinning. He's using some blocks. Meanwhile, there was a building down, the big building they've built, where the they've built the i think the oil people have built some school around it yeah that building when they started it was sinking because of the strain the the water that was passing there and stuff so they needed to do underpinning you were teaching us in class showing us but i didn't see where it's sinking why why can't we take <laughs> take us there for us to have a few look so as we are young and Kofi and Co are advocating for this thing. When you get your social media handles, you get your Facebook handles and the rest of write and tweet about this so that the system will change, so that it will help you do stuff and do it well. Because then most organized concept cravat barbeji or modi. Meanwhile, so no man to your artist, or man to your sound, or man to your shit. Small thing boy one job. Vat, both of Vat officials, no Mujina Ho, near any mobile hide and seek. I remember those days, Paragon days. Vat for the Vijina Horma. You just can't do level, and what be second gates. Ham, no, on the banner, the ticket to Vetro, and be a bear for a penny a toy. Now, you're in Toka. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. My name is Kwame Edumante. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kwame Edumante. That was insightful. Thank you so much. So, whilst I was standing there, DJ Bruski said, Charlie, if you have a cotton kubi, <laughs> DJ Ruski. So I shared your message. So Danny Walker on Facebook is saying, watching live from Wasa by Dre. Bodre. Bodre, I say. God bless you for such an initiative, Kofi Kenata. Patilomote says, Wow, I'm learning a lot from you, sir. We need more of such seminars all over Ghana. Adum Ohima says, watching live from Tema. Thank you, bro. Very inspiring team move. A boy Nathan says, Authorities, authorities, authorities. Becca, yeah, baby, says, Listen, no, listen. Nana Aya Gifty says, Wow, I love this. God first sends in this, it says, Great idea. So, these are some of the messages we are getting on social media. What will be yours? Share to as many people as you could. Let them also know what we are doing here. Let them also get these insights that we are having here and i hope you are jotting down a lot are we anyway so it's time for the q a the questions and answers we have 10 minutes to the speakers okay please my name is kwami my bless and my statement is going to deal with the health issues and iom um we know there are a lot of youths that are planning illegal immigration just because they are unemployed or something. And we know unemployment can cause psychological distress. And it really worries a lot because especially when it comes to maybe a group of people when we meet and maybe we are five people, we've gone to the medical school and four are making it and the other one is not making it. It's like self-esteem distress you feel that you are not you are not wet because how can you go to school with your mates and you are the only one who is not succeeding so i wanted to know that what is iom doing with dealing with the health issues of this because a lot of people are taking decisions on illegal immigration because of what is affecting them psychologically and i'm in the field of the health sector i know what i've been seeing a lot of people who come there with mental issues just because of this thing. So this is my question. Thank you. All right. So that's a question. I hope I, I um, have that jotted down. Okay. So any more questions to our speakers? We have eight minutes more. All right. 
to who specifically your name and you direct your question. All right, so I'm Isaac once again. So um, the first one to Mr. Dumante, thank, thank you for the wonderful um, message. And he spoke about the collaboration thing, and it's very true. You can't, you can't go to um, Cantamanto without you getting what you want. It's all about um, the collaboration bit. But um, as young entrepreneurs too, as you said, um, authorities and then all that, and sometimes too, you even get frustrated along the line. You don't even get to uh, continue what uh, you want to do. So you starting up, I definitely you encountered all those things. How were you able to actually sail through regardless? Okay, this is what is coming, but still, I want to do it. Right. And then um, to GNPC, uh, I'll commend you for the projects that you are doing and then all that. But uh, Hunter West, yes, you're here. Be. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. At the mention of GMPC, we have the executive director here, Dr. Dominic Edria, is in our presence. Um, thank you once again. Um, a bit touched by the video shared with us, I wanted to share something. It's a youth program, so I think the youth, with everything that we have, can just contribute. So kindly listen. From my lips, I speak about the region with the best in the West, made for the best and the best. So never be surprised to hear the best comes from the West. With my words on move like Kofi Kinata, we as youth never go do run away or store away from our home because home, sweet home. A lot dying on the sea, the desert, and a lot in human suffering and a lot in human trafficking, just in search of greener pasture in the winter or the Sahara, just for the money to buy pizza and beggar, and also to be called Benin Owusu Kujisi Entry a.k.a. Boga. Benin Owusu J.C. Entry, a.k.a. Boga. Forgetting that each man was a seed planted in his nationality for his national growth. Honestly, the pressure on the youth is high. But remember, life is not a race to be raised by racists at race course. In the relax, not as there, the Atlantic Hotel one air condition. Kofi Kenata grew from such a place and a humble home in Efiokuma to become our light in the West. Now as an artist who paints pictures with his words like our father who acts in heaven. Migration is important, but my friends, fellow Ghanaians, irregular migration is not a choice for us. Keeping my heart on like a promise, or keeping my heart on like Jedubli Ambuli. So today I'm with my fellow youth today, and keeping the promise to continue the West Side legacy. We are putting our region on the map. And you say, Windows 10, Western Region Day, icon. It is saying that there is a saying that it is lonely at the top. We are the best, we will keep being the best, and the first to be making the difference. So if it is lonely at the top, remember that we will just make sure we get to the top, even if we have to work with Acorn. I am Move, a man of vision and excellence, and which is made in Tadi by Mike on the mic. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you recorded it. That was powerful. Thank you so much. Any more questions? All right. So we have two minutes more to end the session. Um, please, good afternoon. My name is Kingsley Kujo. I'm a, a cameraman for uh, Etumpan TV. What I want you to get a little idea of us is that the youth nowadays don't have any like mentality of what they are coming for in this life. Let's take for example, I, when I was a kid, I never knew of being a cameraman or something. 
But when I grew up, I just get the idea of learning how to shoot, learning how to a whole lot of things. So I just want you people to come to the lower state or the local area to come and teach the basic students, that's the JHS, SHS, and that of the local, to know what they will come and do in future so that they will not depart from what they are capable of. That's what I want to say. Thank you. So he wants us to localize this seminar. We should bring it down to the localities. And I'm sure since the convener, Kofi Kinata, is here, he's taking notice of this and we will act on it. Timuv has noted this. Any more questions? We can take one and we move. Um, thank you once again. Um, it's a suggestion. Hello. Um, it's a suggestion. I think um, the youth should also serve. We didn't talk much about service. Most of the youth do not want to serve. If we serve, we'll be able to learn what our elders have done, and we can get to wherever we would want to be in future. In as much as entrepreneurship is very important, whatever we learn from our elders will get get us to where we want to be. Um, thank you very much. So that's service. So thank you so much to our set of speakers. You will kindly take leave of us. Thank you so much. With a round of applause, let's make sure they sit before we stop clapping. Thank you, thank you. Yamu Akwendu, thank you, Mr. Vincent Anand. Thank you, Mr. Kwame Edumante and Mr. Kwame Kakari. We have two sets, the last killers so to say. So with a round of applause, let's welcome Justice Beidou, a multimedia journalist, award-winning journalist, and lawyer Fifi Bachman. And in the next 10 minutes intense, they are coming to also talk to us. Round of applause. Hey, lawyer. <laughs> lawyer legit inspirational. Or legit current inspiration. Lawyer, lawyer. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. And they are going to do extempo. They are not going to have any presentation. Uh, lawyer, are you, or we should start with justice. You are ready. All right. What's the point? You go learn in sound. Justice, they won't say it. Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Fifi Bachman. I'm a lawyer, so you can call me lawyer Fifi Bachman. Uh, I grew up in Takradi here. I was born in Kwesimintim. That is why my big brother and father was referring to Kwesimintim. I was born in Kwesimintim. I stayed at Zenit. Zenit is the hub of Takradi, the center. We call it the fulcrum around which Takradi revolves. And Zenit was a place where anytime you come, you will come and meet the seamen, those Agadeshi, Agadeshu, hey, which kana, were learning all those things. They were coming from, you know, they were seamen, so we loved also to be part of uh, that trade. But before I go on, let me make a passionate appeal. This my passionate appeal goes to the convener and the team that as i was sitting there in fact i was i was sad within that if we have all these great men and women in takradi here we didn't we didn't bring anybody from outside if you have these great brains and men here please let's put them together you can catch us put us in one room and let us come out with ideas for the betterment of Western region. Don't let it be a seminar. Put us round table. My boss is here. My boss is here. My boss is here. In fact, I have had contact and connection with all of them. And I know what they carry. So, my brother said that, who, the one who started, he said, we, Brother Chia, Chia Hene, he said, we should die empty. And that has been my principle, that whatever best thing that God has given to me, I would ensure that I give to the world before I die. 
and that is dying empty i think i learned from many in fact the national service boss was saying that uh, service is not uh, a punishment indeed it is not i did my national service at abra abuano at in in the central region in fact i had the opportunity my uncle was jehuapia he was a deputy regional minister so he said where they had put me abuano in fact from there if you after you have you have taken a, a, a car where the car will alight you to the village you have to walk from here to park Grant runabout and it was through the forest i could sing god and all my songs will finish you will be carrying your water but i learned it i told him that i want to experience it national service is not a punishment when i became a lawyer i went to Enchi. One night, I got there around 1 o'clock. There was light off. The hotel I used to lodge was full. So there wasn't any place I could sleep. I got some two kayayos. They told me they could help me. It was 1 o'clock. Late night, light off. I didn't know anybody. I said, help me. They took me to their room to go and sleep. And I remembered where I slept during my national service. I slept pa, because I, have, I had experience now whatever we do we are bound by law so we say that man is free but everywhere in chains we are free in fact freedom to move is one of the fundamental rights that god has endowed us it's a fundamental right so you can move from here to any place that you want but insofar as we are free but bound in chains, the law guides us. Unofficially, I have been banned from doing stowaway cases. Unofficially. So anytime there's a stowaway case and I go to court, I, because of my background, I feel pity for them and I would want to save them anytime i go to court so the judge told me that you are not going to do any stowaway case here again i've been banned now i had a brother i was living with in fact my father died when i was 14 years my boss mr edumante was saying that in Takrade, it is never true that the gods in Takrade do not like business it is because we know ourselves and we try to you know, if you see somebody going up, what we do is that we tell, ah, our partner to the Madia. Is it you? 14 years, I was in secondary school. I sold, I have sold Crash Awesu before. I've sold Orange before. I have sold Coconut Kube before. Not, not that which you were talking about. No. I was, I was slicing it and selling it as Zenith, Prempe Cinema, 12.15. In fact, I have pushed truck before. My friends could, from school, immediately school closes, I rush to town and come and take my truck. And when I met my friends, I was the one who would call them so that they wouldn't call me and laugh at me. So I called them. All of us should know, the youth over here, we should know that the end is what matters. The end is what matters. Those people, I, in fact, I was selling Lotto. My agent number is 68. And my VAG number is 464. So because of that experience, National Lotteries arrested about 150 Lotto agents, brought them to court. I used my experience to save them. Many of my friends will see you and say that areas is from Sweetcha Lotto. Ah, you know, now secondary school here to Nekutu ya. I know how to say, uh, to to Nekutu was since in number of work and then peel alata. Then they will be laughing at you. But I told myself that look, I want life to be better. 
for myself. And the song I always sang was that we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Deep in our heart, we do believe we shall overcome one day. I know that with this conference, Western region is going to arise. I would make a humble appeal to Mr. Dia and my boss. He's gone, the one who gave the GMPC speech. Where is he? Mr. Kakare. Please. There is. Mr. Edumante was talking about frying of pork and, you know, those people into this hospitality industry, etc. Madam. The street from St. Francis to your place. It's a very, very juicy street. I would want to humbly plead with Mr. Edia. Assist Kofi Kenata to make that street Kofi Kenata Street. <laughs> let's make it an entertainment street. People have started. Let's, let's just put something there. The various loans. People can start selling something. The move street. Well, thank you. So that this conference at least will come out with something. He has given us this. I beg you, let's give him this. <laughs> now, what the problem that we have found ourselves in, in fact, Mr. Edubante was talking about the court where Snit is taking many you know, companies, I have to sometimes go on my knees and beg for some companies. We have to talk. We have to talk. We have to speak. That is why I'm pleading that let's come together. Let us come out with something peculiar for Western region. And I believe that with this brainy brains here, we can get something to do for ourselves. Many of the litigations that we have in the western region borders on land i'm just giving you one tip that anytime you want to buy a land anytime you want to buy a land the first thing is to ensure that you conduct a search ask for the site plan conduct a search and go to the land in fact when you are conducting a search go there yourself and write because we have Goro boys there who will tell you that, oh, everything is okay, but it wouldn't be okay. So go there yourself. Instead of going to buy litigation, spend some time, go and conduct a search, go to the land and see that it is unencumbered. Unencumbered means that nobody is on the land. Because many people have bought land and it has become a form of litigation for them for this conference it, it is surviving the vicissitudes of COVID-19 the changing hardship of COVID-19 for some of us we have benefited from it because but for COVID-19 Kofi Kenata wouldn't have had this conference here for us to meet all these persons whom we are going to have interaction with. In fact, uh, the league, we have a legal word called, called going to have intercourse with. So that we can have that intercourse and benefit from it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, lawyer Philip Fifi Bachman. And Sambiatu Muntari says exactly service. One year, boy, my boy, unku my boy. Bonita Nana Bontat says so far so good. Kofi Kenata is a president in Ghana music. No objection. Kweku Poku Okra, lovely. And we have another one from Marian Asmen. Timuf Orekodo. Desire Ajiri watching you live from Takwa. Esianyo Mauli live from Enzema. 
and Sambia to Muntari again says the move street. One more didn't already do. I say, who street never ended? I bet you do. Also in the street, I bet you too, do. So the next speaker is a Talo Group Scholarship beneficiary. He went to the UK to do his master's degree, came back, worked with the multimedia as a senior journalist, award-winning. He's gone on fellowships in the UK, in the US. He's traveled across the world, and he's just as Beidou, a proud native of Ahanta, Aguna Kwanta to be precise. Justice. Coronavirus, COVID-19. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Nana. Um, I have a big headache and my headache is actually what to say because if you're on a panel that has very, very respected pe people including my own boss, Chairman Edu Manti, who I've always also spoken and very distinguished people from our beloved Sekendi Takwadi I really, really am thinking that Abba Sempa Dambi Babeka Abba Sempa Dambi Babeka You know, I am truly blessed and um, Whilst I was listening to um, Mr. OKT, um, something about what he does today um, struck me and, and got me to also maybe bring my own story uh, to share with other young people. When I was entering, I went out and when I was coming back, as an old friend that I was in school with, um, I call Obri Preparatory School. I don't know. I want to talk to you about that. There's a guy that I haven't met in so many years. And he was sitting there, and he, was, he, was, he used to be my friend, and he, um, he mentioned the name that I used to be called about 20 years ago, and it's called Bola Bola. <laughs> and the reason I was called Bola Bola is because I've always been this small. And it was so tough many, many years ago that every time I, the uniform I was wearing was by someone who had left the school. And so my uniform was always beyond my knee and then always um, almost like a long sleeve shirt. So for about four years, my name was Bola Bola. And somehow it was a name that I enjoyed. So yeah. But um, that sort of starts my story. And I've been listening to people talk about opportunities here. And then I also want to also say that as a young person myself, we need to also admit the reality that it is very, very difficult for a lot of young people. It is very, very difficult if you look at the backgrounds that a lot of us come from. It is not as if we do not see a lot of these opportunities that are being spoken about here. It is just sometimes, some people just even feel themselves too unworthy to even walk into some offices and then meet people and then even ask for opportunities or talk about things with them, even when they qualify. So I understand some of our young people. But um, when Mr. OKT was speaking about taking challenges and risking to go to places where no one wants to go, even on national service, it reminded me of 2006. I was one of the very first people who got employed when the National Youth Employment Program, which is now JIDA, gone through so many scandals, and is now, I don't know, still JIDA, right? Um, I was actually one of the first people to be employed on that program. And when it came in 2006, I had just come out of secondary school um, a year. And before I went to secondary school, I was actually a very good student. But I fell into bad friendship and bad company and became a bad student after three years in school. And so I failed. So when I wrote SSE, I actually failed. For all. <laughs> so for about a year, I was really stuck and I didn't know what was going to happen again in the next phase of my life. And I really needed a place where I could, sort of a sanctuary, to go and um, press the reset button for my life and then really start on a fresh note. So when they were looking for people to go places, so youth employment, at the time I'm, I remember the first salary we were being paid was 60 cities. It was 600,000 cities in 2006. That was like huge money. And a lot of people wanted to stay in the big cities. People wanted to teach in Takrade. People wanted to teach in Kwesimiti. People wanted to teach in Apuwa. And then 
I went to the guy who was the coordinator for the program at the time and told him that I wanted to go to a village. I wanted to go to a place where I could be alone and then really commit myself to a community that is in need. So they posted me to a small village called Akwadei. Akwadei is just a few kilometers away from Cape Three Point, which has been spoken about as the reference point for oil and gas. And so I remember going there in 2006, traveling from Agona Kwanta to Akode, about two hours journey, um, terrible road, dusty road. In 2006, when I went there, there was no electricity, no water, no internet, nothing. I remember when we went to school at the time, we, uh, mobile phones had just be, begun to become a thing, and everyone had a phone. And if you uh, were a young person of just a, coming out of teenage, you, you had a phone. So I had a small Nokia phone, and when it came to where we were teaching in the school, we had a tree where everybody would tie the phone to the tree, and we would all be in the classrooms. And there would be one student who is always usually the talkative in the class who would be asked to come and man the mobile phones for the teachers. It was that bad. And so if anybody got a call, he has to go call people to come and pick the, phone, the call. No electricity, no water, nothing. And... When I would be there, I would go there for about four weeks and not come back home. Sometimes when I'm coming back home, by the time you get out, but what that, those two years offered me was an opportunity to really find a career. And today I'm a journalist. I work with a multimedia group. I'm a, a senior multimedia journalist and also produce documentaries. And it was in Akodai that I found this career. It was in Akwadai because at the time, it was just a year after I had gone there that Ghana discovered oil. And it was in Cape Three Point. Cape Three Point was just um, 30 minutes by walk from, from Akwadai. And I saw the excitement. I saw people, everybody going out. Everybody was excited. And for me, it was I, I sort of, the stories that went around and the excitement in people, I found myself in a place where I could tell the stories of these people. Because I, I could go, come back and then people would ask me, oh, this Cape Three Point place, what's a whole oil on the How does it look like? Then I'll be telling people, oh, this place is a small village. I don't even know what is going to come up in the next 10 years or whatever. But that is, I got a solid foundation there. And it was through that, within those two years, I was able to study because I, was, I had so much time to myself, no more friends back where I was coming from. Over, after two years, I was able to re-register, write all my papers, and pass every single one of them. Every single one of them. After two years. After two years, I was able to now say goodbye to youth employment program and then get an admission into the Ghana Institute of Journalism um, in 2008. Four years... I had gone there after four years, I had my degree. Even before the four years came to an end, two years into my um, degree, I landed an, an internship at Joy FM in 2010. Something that was really, really rare. Um, but, you know, the fire that I had in me, the fire that I had in me coming from that foundation that I had built for myself, you know, it was really, really, it pushed me everywhere. I remember the first day, I decided to write an application for internship to Joy FM. I had a friend who asked me, Chairman, so I was like, 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 I was It was like a joke, but he was actually really telling me something that, how could you be dreaming of, you've just come here and you're just two years into your course and, and you want to go and intern at Joy FM of all places, you know. But again, the fire in me. I went on by the grace of God again and then I got this internship and that was the beginning of my sort of national level journalism career by the grace of God oil has been good uh, many people say oil you know, we know we we haven't seen enough but I am one of those people who say oil has been good because myself Nana Kwesi we went to the United Kingdom for the first time because Ghana has oil and because we come from Takradi because at the time the scholarship was on we had a, a specific slot to the western region and all of us benefited as a result of that arrangement 
And so long story short, I'm sure we've had, we've been bored with a lot of talk today, and we've had so much already. Uh, build your own foundation and then have a plan have a plan have a plan and then long term plan short term plan medium plan right in 2006 when I said to myself I wanted to be a journalist I said that over the next 10-15 years I want to win I want to be an international award winning journalist I want to win I want to be in the space where the big media players are playing I want to be in that space. That's what I said to myself in 2006. And then I started working towards it. Went to the School of Journalism, started interning, took a lot of jobs, did a lot of work for people, got paid nothing, but it taught me a lot of things. And within those 15 years, I have gotten on those platforms, gotten into award competitions that has had submissions from Reuters, from the BBC, uh, and then South China Morning Post and one and so i would say that let us let us build our foundation and then let's run our own race a lot of us as young people too, that's the other problem that we have today you know or started all in adeka kribia on ankasa on am kwanu dunna we hude kwanu dunna ni mno o shen yanku social media instagram we post na nopa no so i say i made a marble bread on koye crowd you know, but you, you, you are failing to, you know, look at yourself, look at your peculiar situation and understand the opportunities and challenges that are available to you and see how you can run your own race. And so that is what I will leave with you. I'm sure if there's any um, question that comes up, I'll be happy to answer them. And I am happy to be the baby last of this very, very um, incredible gathering. Again, I would also say thank you to... Kofi Kenata. I wrote on my Facebook yesterday. I think um, he's one of the best things that has happened to this city in the last decade. And um, we thank God for people like him. Um, and I thank you very much. Thank you so much, Justice. Round of applause for Justice. An inspiring story indeed. So indeed, Western Region has cocoa, oil, timber. It has rubber and it has Kofi Kenata. And this one is from Facebook. Asibe says, Tim, move. Asibe, Asibe, but what about us, Asibe? Um, Benjamin Ochre says, there's a big difference between being interested in achieving a goal and being committed. One minute. And being committed to the legal goal. And what I've discovered is that being interested isn't enough. Interest is being curious. Commitment requires you to do whatever it takes. Whereas interest means you will do enough, but not more. So we have more speakers on Facebook as well. Prince Donko says, very inspirational. And this one, Nanama says, can this be very often? See, Gaza. Please, maybe a better answer. <laughs> Chris, Papi K says, large up, Kofi Kenata. Henry Amate Fio says, feel like coming to Tadi just for this. And more of the messages are coming through. Esiano Mawuli says, live from Enzema. And we have a lot of the messages online. Go on Facebook, serve Kofi Kenata, and share it to as many people as possible. We have 10 minutes to ask them questions based on their presentations. Um, let's do three questions, please. Three, and we move on to the next thing. No question. How about someone? We'll be on the We'll look sharp. See that one? It will be some mukromofo. Watch them online. Next time, see that Mister Nyaman can be organize the abobo when you know or send me no, but you better do your show. No, I'm more about what I need. I love carbon. Oh, man, I love carbon. You're too wonderful. Now, Eric, you should build your own foundation. Yeah, stage be you do, you know. Foundation, I'm going to say, you know, you're going to build a foundation. 
ye into me ye atasa. Them set of bachi ye different breed do. Why? Even the other ye different breed. Yen yasa sanya me people have seen our own pay abasa sano. BB today ada sana aglasa. This is street light, flood light. Ada sebab ni ya bobol. Atasa. Eh, you know. I look to the phone up on the day. They were those days, young Papa Woody King, what about something? No, no, end of an A, B, A, it's it, and of what you do. Even a madden, and say, I know when you are with Tel or Nianakasa, and Pabasa Bassa. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, lawyer Fifi Bachman and Justice Bade, with a round of applause as they take their seats. Ha, oh, it's been a long day. We've been here for four hours, 30 minutes. We promise you four hours. And we had fluid guests as well. There are people who came in, said they just came in from lunch. And today is a working day. Most people haven't gone on break. So just to say thank you to all of you for coming and the online audience. We stream to over 600,000 audience. And the numbers are amazing. They keep increasing on and on. And everybody who came in and out, people from Father's Home Ministries, from Ajam Ministries as well. And we've had all of them here to join us, the big people here. But we have this man who wants to say a word to the convener, and I'm sure all of us could relate. And he is the executive director of GMPC Foundation, one of our sponsors. And with a round of applause, please let's welcome Dr. Dominic Edia. Thank you very much. Uh, this is just to do this in a minute. My word to the youth over here is life isn't about finding yourself. But rather, life is about creating yourself. This is what I will, I will say to all the youth over here. And to Kofi, trust me, listening to the speakers here, Western region is ready to support you. You told me last year at the TT Auditorium that this is going to be an annual event. Truly, we are here today. Congratulations. <laughs> the GMPC Foundation is there to support you kindly let us know your move as you've been doing let us know exactly what you want to do and we'll never turn our back on you we'll definitely support you all the time uh, to your team Uju and all the rest I'll, I'll, I'll say they've done a good job continue making Western Region proud and we'll always support you thank you very much Thank you very much, Dr. Dominic Eduya. Oh, we can do it better for him. <laughs> so to the team at Team Move, headed by Ojo Williams, um, Lenzi, Abeku Breezy, and myself, we say thank you so much to everybody who supported Gloria and everybody. But I'm not sure we could leave here without hearing from Kofi Kenata. Or oh? Oh, we can close. Okay, okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. -bye. Oh, Nanamu Asama, Austin Kadamu Debeo. Anyway, so with a round of applause, I convened the main reason why this happened. Kofi Kenata. DJ, what's she? You know, Smacks. I mean, you don't have your way to my mom, but no. We feel the soft, soft, okay, crap. I am for interfant more home, you be do uncle concern. Okay, you better be asking one of you know, especially speakers, you know. Marcus has so much to be seen at the pa, like me, you be a Musina, Takra de or the Marcoma home at Asa, eh? Or a Mudrin P out of frustration, me feed the Takra de Pudi, I know being fair to us, why the national cake in Puy and Yay and Dina, the Oya, frustration P at Asa. Oh, you pump a pedal, or you pump one chair. Western region, you're fair, and Western region, you'll be on for the crew. Oh, no, a full oil, and the archer, one cup, one cup, mammy. Oh, you're in the tree, the wood in your bedgy. 
on the side of the best low, side of the I made the baby in your oil, but Kakum made say, I know, they would say, I had a monotony motto in Jum, and see, one Jumma motto, I may pay them to put three, maybe a more made in tad in Jumma, maya, and go for fifty day Christmas and butter crowd in Panacha, Christmas in Yigana, Atasa, only a Kakum meeting my and Jumma motto, and see whom I move more freestyle and above more, where your box and Kaka move more freestyle. And you know, but I'm a catcher will be a day. I saw my art to a hano, and the eighty and the yellow coffee. Young practice, I am yet to move phobia and body by catching the woman to can. I wear by Hadino, you open down Massa de Cofia, Opa de Bella Park, and then you want to be San Dolo Quain. It will be the park park, giddy giddy, be San Dolo Quain, maybe a drifter. Are we? And you know, remember, kind of be honest on a crow bit in Bia or from boy in a year than the city, year than region. A beautiful place and a place to be. But I can't meet him. I can't, you know. Eh, coffee can have a fishing part of ranking. Oh, yeah, brand new. Only did the brain, you know, but it compensates a made in tidy now. I'm bad, you know. Eh, the title is something nice, aka may allow number than them. Yo, I will feel you come in. Eh, you know. Eh, kau sih makan deh, kau kerja makan, betul biasa. Ya, nasi deh, betul biasa. Oba Chan Chan, nah, eh, nasi. Eh, betul biasa kerja bosol forte tu. Kau mikul tiga nata. Life is too short, I know if you waste time. All right, so Paul Pablo has been waiting for this opportunity for more than five months, and he has something for Kofi Kenata. He thought this would be the best time to. Present to him. I see. Medassi. Oh, a child, you may see me. May I could be a more for man. Oh, could see me when we am the two weeks I know Jay Juma. Instead of picture, come and don't draw our drawer. No, I saw bread. Instead of the best hour, no, or sour bread. And see, most of them put in picture, come on a more draw. Now, my bread and the picture, okay. I'm going to look smarter. Entrepreneurship in the beginning, you won't see you. Now, my bread and the picture, okay. What draw in a mid day, prepare, fell. But that's. Enjoy your life because problem is not the finish. All right, so all too soon, Anna. All too long, Anna. <laughs> all too long, we've come to this end of Made in Tadi Youth Seminar. From all of us at Team Move, from all of us at IOM, European Union, GMPC Foundation, we say thank you to all our speakers, OKT to Mr. Kakari, to Dr. Dominic Eduya, to Mr. Kwame Edumante, to Nanaya Amwakwedu, to Etwa Ahene, to Lawyer Bachman, to Mwababa Nanyin, to Mrs. Marian Ampon, and Mr. Ampon is here. Shout out to Mr. Ampon, he's a Santa. <laughs> By us. Anyway, so thank you so much for your audience, especially the online audience. You've been great joining us since the inception of this program at 11. We promised 10, but we started at 11. You've been with us through the walk of the way, and we cannot do this without saying thank you to you. You spent a lot of data just to acquire enough knowledge, just to acquire enough wisdom, and I'm sure your notes are full. Everybody who has been here, you've been very supportive of this, sharing on social media and all, but we will call on somebody to do a special vote of thanks. Let's call somebody to do a special vote of thanks. Tilly, of course you're Tilly. Let's walk away with a round of applause. Enjoy your life because problem is not the finish. Leave me make a job life. I know speaker for English. Brother, I know lazy. I work hard for this life. So I go jump on like what is your love? What is your love?
Hi, good afternoon. Um, our cherished, most valued um, guest, and ladies and gentlemen, I deem it a privilege to um, be asked to propose a vote of thanks uh, this occasion. First of all, um, we thank God for making this day possible for all of us to gather here and bringing this seminar to an end successfully. On behalf of Team Move, I want to thank the organizers, or, or organizers such as IOMUN, EU, and GNPC Foundation for supporting the 2020 Team Move Youth Seminar greatly. I also want to thank our honorable people, our special speakers, and also um, our invited guests for gracing this occasion and sharing with us your honest opinions and ideas. Also, God bless you for the tremendous work done and uh, impacting onto the youth on how to survive the vicissitude of COVID-19, the opportunities the pandemic has presented, and the damages of irregular migration. Lastly, kudos to the entire team who brought this event up. I say, Ayuko. Thank you so much. Across course, Tilly works with Empire FM and a proud team move member. Team move official, let me emphasize. And we had the team move officials here as well. And we've come to the end of this session. Please spread the word. And it's time for the picture taking, the speakers and Kofi. But we have finger food for you outside. Just to remind you, we have a customized cocktail. <laughs> What's the main counter first? We have a customized bar, team move bar outside. So we'll go in batches of 10 to take our finger food outside, a cocktail bar outside. But before then, please, the speakers and Kofi would take picture. Only the speakers, please. Coronavirus, COVID-19, Brave in the world crowd. Oh, yeah, Why the fever never bow? I'm ready. Oh, do 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 do. I want to enter sense and the days. Oh, me me, oh, yo, oh, do me need it. I want to run in the cold. I do me need it. Oh, feel it easy. Oh, yeah, oh, papa. Oh, baby, you are safe, baby. Oh, yeah, 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 Malam suro corona, wala wo paste yo suro corona. Eye mu, baya ti to bi a suro corona. Eye mu, baya ti ye ina e suro corona. Usu suro corona, se uno smart si se luko proba. Mama wo me feel you to be just social distance and wear polano. Uno wo safe se mi na ye, an sanitizer no fit be fair ye. Man jam pui pui, the mission ya na tre fi. Female speakers, share strategy.